That gathering won't find itself, you know? Move it. You know, the can is right there in front of you. Oh, shut up. I told you my sight's not recovered after the change. Hey, so you're telling me it's not the blues? Family of Calvert, uh, another tick wannabe. Well, that's not gonna happen. Bye.
fucking maze. Gotta be a way out, though. here somewhere. Dead end. Great. Hmm? You seeing this too? Take it off. Mr. Rentier, on a first date? What do you take me for? You're right. Maybe a little light to set the mood. No, no need. I see it now. Of course. The glamour. I'm on it. Today, Chester. Please. I need to concentrate. It's not that easy to sever the illusion from its source. What's the source? You don't want to know. Take the explosives, you get to Bono. Is this about the bridge? It's not not about the bridge. <sighs> Got the damn train, didn't I?
share a tech architecture, but that, that's something. It's hard to compete against the species that keeps on growing and advancing with their technology, creating new and more dangerous weapons of war and other engineering marvels. As I see it, the real struggle is nature versus technology, instinct versus genius. We have allowed those naturally subordinate to us to transform themselves from prey into predators. If we don't alter this trajectory, eventually they will murder us all. enough.
are a unique species, brothers and sisters. We are not bred. We are not born. We come to life when we accept the gift of change. Our powers are many, and they have served us well. The art of glamour has given us safety through secrecy, but I am afraid we are becoming the victims of progress. Sooner or later, human technology will find a way to see past our illusions. They will expose and demonize us and make us their ultimate enemy. Inevitably, we will become their inferiors. Jesus, it's huge. When did they build this? And how? their little party. We consider ourselves proud hunters, predators, but that pride sometimes prevents us from growing as a species. Internal divisions have weakened us. Our numbers dwindle while their numbers grow, but it's not too late. We can still survive, but to do so, we must be ready to adapt. We cannot be too proud to evolve.
be more powerful, but they will crush us with their numbers. Listen to the voice of reason. Enough. Your line's thirst for all out war with the humans endangers us all. Peace of Havana. Without the sheep. The wolves go hungry, yes. But the day is coming when the sheep will outwit the wolves. Haven't you been watching, brother? The humans have harnessed the power of steam and lightning, and they grow mighty. If our hubris allows us to grow fat and lazy in the shadows, they will soon have the power to hunt us down like dogs. <sighs> And so, you propose war. War suggests there is a chance we might lose. I propose we strike. With my new asset, we can control the change. Reclaim the Sanguisuja's rightful place at the top of the food chain. Control the change. Are you mad? Even suggesting such a thing is blasphemy. Dominic, brother, these are blasphemous times. While my methods may very well be at variance with our tradition, I can tell you one thing. If we don't adapt, we will perish. Enough. I will not allow you and your bastard breed to, to lead us. Into annihilation. Peter Davana, of a high crime of conspiracy against your own kind. I sentence you and your line to the true death. I told you, Father. They wouldn't listen. We had to try, Felicity Mikara. Our work will be a lot easier if we can help them understand. If we can't... Then... We... FORCE THEM TO!
Think you could have brought a bigger knife? Some people get a gold watch when they retire. I got Susan here. <laughs> Should have asked him how to get out of here. Too late. He won't be of any use for a month or two. Wait. What about Chester? Well, what are you gonna do? Now that is how you shape an explosion. Damn, we're late. Now at least we won't be going back to the manor empty-handed. Taxpayers' money. James Harrow. The people's hero. <laughs> I heard the White House sends him golden toilet paper. As long as he keeps the presidential ass clear of tick trouble. Feed him well. We've got a lot of ground to cover tonight. You're not staying for the presentation? The whole institute is in town. Uh, I'll pass on the corporate back padding session. I don't need another retirement lecture. Here, take this to your father before it wakes up and starts cursing us all to high hell. Great, so I'll just tell him you've traded killing vampires for swilling cheap bourbon? Tell him whatever you want. Fine, skip the presentation. But you ain't getting away from a final drink with me afterwards. Home sweet home. I'm taking it. Mr. Rent here? At ease, boys. My father in his office? He is. Hello, sir. Director Rent here spared no expense to improve those gardens. Oh, <laughs> officially they called it a cholera epidemic, but truth was they were dealing with a terrible outbreak of amateur necromancy. The entire institute was engaged in the hunt. Train fare here cost me an arm and a leg. I hope it's worth it. Veil of secrets. From my first year of cadet training. I'm the shortest one of the bunch. But the very next year, I grew like a weed. Had to buy all new pants. Mr. Rent here. You remember me? Where the hell you been? Thought you got bitten by some tick. Some of those fangy fellas were hiding out in Providence. That's why the president ordered the Western Edgar Providence and my tour. father in the Civil Did War. You those ones that grew tenables? Right before the bloody the Battle first. of the Wilderness, Central Virginia. His life changed forever during that fight. Highborn nearly killed him. Badly tore up his leg. Edgar carried him in the dead of night across enemy lines to a field hospital, but the surgeon could only do so much. After that, Dad could no longer function in the field. Sir. Grave nurse with you. He sends his regards. He's afraid you'll try and talk him out of retirement again. I don't believe either of us want that. You know, he did risk his life to get this for you. That's Harrow's trinket. I'm sure you'll both be rewarded accordingly. Edgar isn't some civilian looking for a medal. This is all he knows. Your institute saw to that. My institute? <sighs> this isn't about Agent Gravener, Jesse. We are on the cusp of great progress. Great change. 
Today's presentation is of critical importance to the family. After which... Edgar is family. After which, I expect you to step up to your duties here at the manor. With all due respect, Director, I am a field agent, not a paper pusher. You're a rentier! <sighs> Why must you always make me spoon-feed these things to you, Jesse? There are bigger things at work here than running around in caves slaying beasts. I do believe someday soon you will see it my way. And if you don't, it's my responsibility to force that change. Now, leave me be. I must prepare for the presentation. And send someone in here to clean up this mess. Mr. Rendier, Agent Feathers is waiting for you in the lobby. You're just in time. The presentation should be starting soon. What do you got for me this time? This is huge. Did you see that airship? All the big shots from DC don't come here for no reason. Word is, the director's gonna Heavy show up as the hell. Gauntlet, but, I mean, you didn't hear that from me. By the stables. He ain't coming in. I heard Gravener's finally retired. Father in all his directorial glory. The artist who painted the portrait, what was his name? Philemon Cole? He was so curious about those gauntlets. Word came back that he talked about them in a local pub, and Father had to give him a very stern talking to. Scared the living piss out of him. Father was a very private person. I'm surprised he ever consented to even pose for this portrait. You can see by the look in his eyes, he wasn't too happy about it. Good to see you back, sir. Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, if you'll take your seats. And, uh, <laughs> welcome. Yeah, I'm Assistant Secretary of War, James Harrow. President Cleveland wants you to know how appreciative we are of the vital service the Urentia Institute performs, defending our great country from monsters of all shapes and sizes. He also wanted me to make sure you're not blowing all our money on Mexican Monty, but that's another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, quite. Well, uh, <clears throat> as I say, keep up the good work. God bless you all, and uh, God bless America. Thank you all for gathering here tonight. It's rare we gather in such numbers, but I believe great progress calls for momentous celebration. Our efforts in the fight against the Sanguisuja's spread have too often been baffled by the creature's most insidious weapon, their so-called glamours. These impenetrable illusions have allowed countless fiends to slip through our grasp for too long. That ends now. Agent Rentier, we've upgraded the standard field agent's gauntlet with something our science bods have affectionately named the Zapper. Not exactly an elegant name, but it does the trick. When triggered, the Zapper sends out an electrical impulse. 
which shatters any nearby Sanguizoon glamours forthwith, eliminating what is not and leaving only what is. Once finished, these new gauntlets will be distributed to cells nationwide post haste, allowing us to sweep our respective territories for glamoured nooks and crannies. This is the beginning of a new age, gentlemen. Armed with this gauntlet, there is no way our enemy can surprise us.
gotten far. Jess! Thank Christ! Where's my father? Still kicking ass, last time I saw him. Old fool thinks he's still in the field. Listen, he wants us to destroy the archives before these assholes get their hands on it. You get to it, and I'll find Harold's pampered ass. Meet me out front. Never thought I'd have to blow up my own house. Hold up, pal. You're gonna be fine. You okay, Agent? Just hold on. traps. Joseph Warren and great-grandfather Dick. To find the tech headquarters, he let the Brits take him captive. Would love to have seen the surprise on their faces when he incinerated those tick nests and saved their royal asses. <laughs>
find my father. Get him out of here. I got this. Don't be cross with me, Father. I couldn't leave you at the mercy of these savages. You not do that, you fleshy toad! You nearly hit him.
We won't make it to Galico like this! Move, Gravener! I order you not to let me die like that! I almost had her. If it weren't for that old wound... Oh, Jesus Christ, don't get old, son. Yeah, yeah, never get married. Now stop blabbing, you're gonna be fine. I know what I'm doing. This is the key, Jesse. Don't let it out of your sight. It's all we've got. It's in your hands now. We need to stop! Stop?! We need to get the fuck out of here! We need to find a defensive position to hold us over till morning. Then we head to Calico. My wife could blow this defensive position over with a wet fart. We need the higher ground. And that's where the sun will hit first. I'll get the horses, and we'll stand our ground up there.
Lightning? Good thing we still got a big shiny ace up our sleeve. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I don't think he's breathing. Calico, it's around the corner. There's a doctor there. Call Epsilon. Sit down and roll up your sleeve. We will save your father, Mr. Rentier. Virgil, Virgil only. 
It's an honor to finally meet you in the flesh, <laughs> sir. Your gauntlet is a thing of beauty. Only a genius could- I need that fixed. Yesterday. I'll need a bigger lab if I'm gonna solve the mysteries of time travel, sir. I mean... How are we doing? Arrow needs a scapegoat. He won't leave without someone to blame for that fiasco. Pissed off little Highborn looking for her maker's head? No one could have predicted that. I don't think she did all that for just Abano. We're missing something. I bet my last buck we'll heal more from this Felicity tick pretty soon. I'm gonna check if Amelia needs some backup with Harrow. Who do I have to bend over this bar and indiscreetly <clears throat> fuck to get some coffee around here? What a day. See you in the briefing room. Owe you everything, Doctor. Need to check on my gauntlet first. There must be a workshop somewhere around. Jesus, what a fucking dump. Did you see the size of that cockroach? Should have taken this meeting in the airship. Mr. Harrow is waiting for you in the briefing room, sir. Yeah, yeah, heard that already.
they think he is? The heir to the fucking crown! According to the protocols, if the director is unable to fulfill his duties, his next of kin takes... And DC agreed to that? When I got your goddamn gilded invitation, I expected champagne and canapes. Instead, some fang fuck broke into your headquarters and slapped you all around like a gaggle of whimpering sissies. Now the entire country is left unprotected while I stand here with my dick in my hand like an idiot. So again, could someone please tell me how the fuck did this happen? Security services were redirected to protect our most valuable asset. And how the fuck wasn't that me? That was my father's call, and it was Agent Gravener's quick thinking that saved your life, sir. For all the fucking good it'll do once I tell the Capitol that its primary defense against all kinds of monsters just collapsed. We'll take care of it, sir. What, from here? This place is a shithole at the edge of fucking nowhere. And don't be fooled by our humble trapping, Secretary Harrow. Calico Cell has the highest survival rate in the Institute, as well as its very best engineer. We are your only chance of turning this around. Then I expect a report on those tick assholes on my desk first thing, Doctor. And who the fuck are you? I, uh, uh, um... <sighs> Wait a minute. I'm the best engineer? You better be, because we need this thing operational as soon as possible, before Harrow comes back to string us all up. Harrow can suck my... How bad is it? Well, the glamour disruptor's fried. Then we have the insulation around the power coupling. Can you fix it or not? It's doable, but I'll need time. A few weeks, a month tops. We ain't got that long. We have to be ready to take down this Felicity character when we find her. You mean if we find them? We have no idea where to even look. Not necessarily. To the north, there's a canyon surrounding the main trail. And the unimaginative locals call it the Devil's Pass. And reports mention possibly unknown vampiric specimens. And we chalked it down to hearsay, but now we sent our top sanguisuge expert to investigate. I hope by expert you mean a field agent and not another bookworm. Scott Bloom co-wrote the Institute's Sanguisuge Best We drink. need soldiers, not pencil pushers. I can't run around looking for a missing egghead hoping that maybe he brings something to the table. When did he last report? Five days ago. Now let's just hope he's lost in research. into.
This species appears to possess shape-shifting abilities, most uncommon for the typical sanguisuge. I dare say, this ability might be blood-dependent, but it's hard to tell based on the limited amount of evidence found. I'm wondering if we're witnessing some sort of accelerated evolution, spurred perhaps by certain unknown environmental factors. Oh, let's check this beauty out. Dead end. Fucking great. Gotta find another way. Hope I'll find some trace of Bloom. Much 
Finders keepers. Gotta squeeze through. This canyon is protected like some kind of vault. What are they hiding here? Take that. Too far to jump. Oof! <laughs> 
Christ, that was tough. Starting to lose hope I'll find Bloom in one piece. Research continues, but nothing I've seen explains the unusual capabilities of this curious animal. Judging by the diameter of the tunnels it creates, I estimate it stands at least eight feet tall and is quite powerful.
find the flying creatures most disturbing. They appear in large numbers, protecting the newly transformed Sangrasuges like hornets guarding their hive. It's not clear if that's their only purpose. Perhaps they also gather sustenance and function as scouts. Where the heck did it go? Yeah, looks like I'm getting closer to its nest. Ugh, what a stench. Bloom? Is that you down there? Uh, yes, it's, it's me, but who are... Ugh. Whoa, you're Jesse Renier, sir. Splendiferous.
care to explain what happened here, Bloom? Oh, uh, well, I was sent here to investigate reports of a novel breed of sanguisuge. When I arrived, I encountered a group of familiars, apparently sent here by their masters. That was a familiar? How come a human turned into that thing so quickly? Well, excellent question, sir. My thesis is that their transformation is linked to the blood from these creatures somehow. The how is what I'm stuck on. Uh, we better take one of those things back with us to the lab. Still beats me what those familiars were doing here. Well, from what I could gather, they were sent on a transport detail, securing a convoy of carts filled with some curious, wriggly little creatures they brought from McCallum's sawmill. No, we need to check that place out. Too in such a hurry. Bar run out of whiskey? Jess, when we dragged your dad in here, there was an awful lot of blood on him. He'll be fine. Bastard's too damn stubborn to die. I've seen my share of battle wounds. The ones William got, no way even half of that came out of him alone. Somewhere between the falling airships and hopping boo hags, I don't know. Could be that collateral damage wasn't the tick's only objective. Could be they... Uh... They infected him? No. No fucking way. Just hold your horses and just think about it. The Institute is infiltrated, and they let both you and William walk away? Jess, when a tick turns a familiar, they form a sort of bond. The sire can see into the servant's mind. Now, they make that link with, say... The man who developed that weapon you're carrying. Edgar, our orders are clear when folks get infected. Infected means dead. Those are his own words. Breathe. I've got an idea. Remember that crap I brought from Lake Mora Pass? That plan that was supposed to be a base for a cure one day? I'm not gonna gamble my father's life on some swamp nerd's magic potion. It's not like we got a handful of aces here, Jess. Dabano and his lunatic spawn are taking the fight to us. And I sure as hell don't want to go to war without our general. Do you? All right. The plant might be back in the manor's ruins. I'll go check if there's anything left of the lab, and you... I go. You need to take care of the gauntlet. I don't give a flying fuck about the gauntlet. I'm not sitting on my ass while my father grows a new set of teeth. And no one asks you to. But if I fail... You and that gauntlet will be the only thing between us and a war we can't win. I got this, okay? Just keep an eye on that nosy lady doctor. And stay close to William, just in case I don't make it back in time. They're waiting for you in her lab. Do you have a moment, sir? It's a tragedy the Debano's head was taken. We lost so much knowledge. God, imagine what we could have learned. Six centuries of knowledge would have been an amazing contribution to the Institute's database. Be careful there, Mr. Rentier, sir. That's what worries me. It's not something you can orchestrate overnight. We've been fighting each other for centuries. Like every other creature, they change over time to get an upper hand against us. Until recently, the Sanguisuge reproduced by turning their familiars. A slow but effective process. But now there's this new breed. 
popping up like rabbits. But they're fierce and resourceful, but still not anything we can class as an evolutionary step up the ladder. Well, if anything, they're a step backwards. Mindless and bloodthirsty. They're cannon fodder. This is De Bono's idea of an army. Humans turn to minions or whatever foul blood beasts they'll end up being. Foul blood? Precisely, sir. Splendiferously observed. Well, I guess to know for sure we have to investigate McCallum's sawmill? McCallum's won't be an easy nut to crack. Without a working gauntlet, we can't penetrate its glamours. Guess it's high time to check up on our resident genius. God, why do I have to be such a pig? Paper, paper everywhere. I can't find shit in here. Oh, hi. Uh, holy moly, where are my notes? <clears throat> As we all know, Faraday's mutual induction phenomenon. Virgil, take it easy with the jargon, please. You're talking to a field agent. <sighs> Diamagnetism, polyphase system. <laughs> Uh, you sure you don't want to hear my radiography joke about... Uh, never mind. Here it is! Long story short, I reverse engineered the disruptor mechanism and identified the problem. Its energy consumption is off the charts! Best engineer in the Institute, huh? Well, before you jump down his throat, perhaps we can give Virgil a chance to explain himself. Miniaturization has its limits. If you want a working disruptor like this, you have to accept the fact that it won't be, well, portable. Like Amelia so kindly pointed out, I'm a field agent, as in I go out in the field. If the gauntlet's not portable, it's useless. I don't mean to put your ass over the fire, but... Apparently you do. But if we don't get it running, we're all done for. Can you make it work? Well... Maybe if I could somehow get my hands on some spare coils from the original Disruptor... Done. Where can I find them? Got reports about a visual anomaly in a mining town called Baxter. It turned out to be a glamour. Director Rentier sent me there to deliver a crate of heavy electrical coils. They were designed to help our engineers disrupt the illusion. Unfortunately, before the team could collect any relevant data, the cell was destroyed by the ticks. Whatever they were hiding must have been important. They left no one alive. How will I know these coils, Virg? Just look for a miniaturized electrical resonance. Okay, transport. okay, that's not gonna work. Pack your shit, kid. We're out in five. I'll go down first and clear the way. Try not to get killed or Blackwell skin me alive. Right. Roger that, Mr. Jesse.